Endpoint routing helps HTTP request to target a particular action method within a particular controller. And model binding helps to map data carried within the HTTP request to an object. But before that object can be consumed by the action method, data validation has to happen because we can never trust the data that is passed by the client through the HTTP request. There are two different ways to do model validation. The first one is the built-in way through data annotation. The second one is custom validation. Let's take a look at both of them in Visual Studio. Data annotations are class attributes. So for example, we can annotate the data transfer objects by using data annotations. And if we say that the ID is required, we can use the required attributes to annotate the product DTO class. I do control dot to import the namespace. And then if I say this name is also required, plus the string length is limited to maximum 10 characters. And I have this API controller attribute on my controller. This API controller attribute will automatically make the model validation happen before the data is passed into the action method. So let's give it a try. I'm going to Postman and I'm posting the same data that I posted in the previous episode. So this laptop computer is it's longer than 10 characters. So when I press the send button, you're going to see errors happen. And the breakpoint that I put in here will not be triggered. So I'm pressing on it now. And you can see that the error is returned right away to the client side. And it says the name field must be a string with a maximum length of 10. So it gives us a very nice error message as well. You can also customize the error message by using the error message parameter like this. So you can put in something like the name has to be less than 10 characters long. And when you do this and run the post method through Postman, you're going to see your own custom error message. So remember, when you use the API controller attribute on the class, the controller class, you do not need to check the model state within the action method. The API controller attribute will take care of the model validation and returns the HTTP 400 bad request status code. In addition to the required attribute and the string length attribute, there are actually a few data annotation attributes that we can use to trigger the automatic built-in model validation. Let's take a look at what they are. So we have compare attribute, which we can use to compare something like two passwords match. We can use email address attribute to make sure the user entered a valid email address. And we can use max length, min length attribute to limit the size of an array or a string. We can use phone number attribute to make sure the user entered a valid phone number. And we can use the range attribute to control a numeric range of a numeric data. We can use regular expression attribute to validate the data with regular expression. We can use the URL attribute to make sure the URL is a valid URL. But what about custom validations? For example, if we have some custom logic, and if I'm adding a released date property, and we have a business rule that's saying that the release date of the product has to be in the past. So this custom logic can be implemented in two different ways. The most straightforward way is once the built-in validation pass, let's make it 20 so that this can pass, then we can access the model data right here. And then here, if we are saying we can implement the logic, we can say if date greater than today, then we're going to add an error, custom error. And what we can do is to use the model state, which the model state comes from the base class, controller base. We can say model state dot add model error. And then we can use name of product DTO dot release date. And the error message will be the product release date 
has to be in the past. And then we can return a bad request and put in the model state. So with this custom validation, let's run it. Control F5. And then we come over here and add the release date. And let's use a invalid date, which is going to be next year, October 1st. And then we will run it, release date. And when we run it, we can see the product release date has to be in the past. So then we change it to October 1st. Today is October 9th. So with 2020 October 1st, thus should pass the validation. And now it passed the validation, it just returns the, the actual product, which is what we have right here. Another way to do data validation is to use the custom validation attribute. Then we can pull this validation outside of action methods so that the action methods can process the data from HTTP request when the request is actually valid, making the developers follow the single responsibility principle more closely and separate, separating the concerns in a better way. So in order to implement the custom validation attribute, let me add the class right here. Uh, normally, we should add it as a separate class, but I'm adding it right here just for demonstration purpose. We're implementing the same logic here to validate the release date. It has to be in the past. So we're gonna say class, released date in in the past okay and we have to derive from validation uh attribute this one and let's override let's override the is valid method with the validation context so we can access the product dto object so in here we're going to say product dto that comes from the validation context validation context has a object instance and we can cast this into product DTO. So when we do that, we can then use and copy from here. Right? So if the release day is greater than today, then it's invalid. So we can return a validation result and pass in the error message right here. And we can copy that error message from here as well. And here is a typo. So the product release day has to be in the past. And then we will return this. And this has to be a new validation. And if it's valid, then we're gonna return validation result dot success. With this, we can use the attribute to annotate the release date. And we don't need the validation right here. And our action method can take the single responsibility of processing valid data. Let's give it a try. I'm doing control F5 running the web API, going back to Postman, changing the time again to sometime in the future. And then when I click on send, it gives me a nice error message that says the release date has to be in the past. All right, that's everything I want to cover for today. If you like my video, please give it a like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next episode.